Hey everyone, I'm Rob and welcome to the test drive. In today's video, I'm gonna tell you the five things that I hate or at least dislike about the 2020 GLC 300. Now, don't get me wrong, I absolutely love the new refreshed GLC. It is leaps and bounds better than the previous generation. It's an awesome all around daily driver and there's so many things that I absolutely freaking love about it. So I have a full review on my channel. Definitely go check that out. But this video is actually about the five things that I don't like and that's just because no vehicle is perfect. So as much as I really, really love love the 2020 GLC 300, it's not perfect. So I wanted to make a video to share what those things are. The first thing I dislike about this car is the Hey Mercedes feature. And actually, what do you want to do? Okay, so th there it was perfect. So here's the problem with this feature. If you just casually say the word Mercedes, it may or may not activate the system. Actually, when I first started driving it, it was like every time I said the word Mercedes, it picked it up and interrupted the radio and asked me what it could do. And while I really like this feature, conceptually, and BMW is doing it too with their new iDrive 7 system where you say, hey BMW to activate the voice command. It's a little bit annoying and disruptive in this vehicle because it will just, when you randomly say the word Mercedes, the system will just activate. Now you can actually turn this feature off in the settings. So you don't have to have this feature and that certainly would alleviate this problem, but I like being able to say, hey Mercedes. And see, right there I said it, and it didn't do anything. So it's kind of inconsistent, and I guess that's the first thing that I dislike about the new GLC 300. Now I will say that this new infotainment system is amazing. It is so much better than the previous extremely old Mercedes-Benz system. So this infotainment system is awesome. I really like it. I just wish that the Hey Mercedes feature was a little bit better. I mean, even right there, it didn't do anything. So my second gripe with the 2020 GLC 300 is the fact that there are no normal or old fashioned USB ports in this vehicle. So I've seen it in a lot of new vehicles lately where you now have USB-C ports and that's great because so many phones are now going USB-C. However, not everybody's phone and the majority of iPhone users especially don't have USB-C functionality with their phones. So that makes it so you actually can't plug in your phone with an old style USB cable to this vehicle. Now, the new iPhones, I think the 11 Pro Max and the 11 Pro and maybe just the 11. I know because my wife has the 11 Pro Max. The other end, not the lightning end, but the end that goes into an adapter is actually a USB-C cable, I believe. So Obviously you could use that cable in here, but you wouldn't be able to use like an old lightning cable. There's just a lot of phones that don't have USB functionality. The other thing is I sometimes will use the USB ports in a vehicle to charge my GoPro and you can't do that here because the other, even though GoPros are actually USB-C, the new ones, the other end is still a normal old USB and maybe that's for like charging convenience or something with like wall adapters, but it's just kind of strange in my opinion that there are no more normal USB ports because I see it in a lot of new vehicles where you now have both. And I agree that the old generation USBs are, you know, old and they're going away and they're going to be antiquated soon, but they're not gone yet. So I would like it if there was a normal USB port in here. Now you have adapters out there, so I'm sure that would work just fine. But again, that's just something that's good to know if you want to use Apple CarPlay or Android Auto in this GLC 300. You're not going to be able to unless you have some type of adapter or unless you have a USB-C cable. Now the third thing that I dislike about the GLC 300 is how the transmission behaves in Sport and Sport Plus. Now it is nice that the throttle's more responsive and the vehicle characteristics are just more aggressive, but it's actually kind of jerky the way that it downshifts and the way that it behaves at low speeds. Yeah, it's, it's a little, like, it's just jerky. Now, the majority of GLC 300 owners will probably never drive it in sport, but it's just something I noticed. It's just a little bit it's just not smooth. And again, I mean, as you get used to driving it like that, cause it kind of, it almost feels like dual clutch like, uh, you get used to it and you just are able to, I guess, play with the 
gas pedal in a way that makes it not so jerky. It's just something to get used to, but it still just kind of behaves a little rough, but only in sport and sport plus. In comfort, it's normal. And I get that it's trying to hold the gears longer. It's trying to be more aggressive. It's trying to make it easier if you want to step on it. It doesn't have to downshift a bunch of gears or anything like that, but it's just a little bit jerky. Now, the fourth thing I dislike about the GLC 300, and I actually don't necessarily blame Mercedes for this, but this vehicle does not come standard with keyless entry, which is very bizarre in a luxury vehicle and in a $45,000 small SUV in a Mercedes, you would think that keyless entry would come standard. And that's what I did when I got the keys for this car. I put them in my pocket, walked up to it, pulled on the door handle and realized that it doesn't have keyless entry. And the BMW X3 also doesn't come standard with it and neither does the Jaguar F-Pace and probably some other vehicles as well that sort of compete with this one. So it's just something that I think should come standard. I get that nobody else is doing it, but I think Mercedes should just be the one to do it. And I think that SUVs in this space were previously coming standard with keyless entry. I think like the old generation X3s had it standard and other competitors in this space may have. I don't know, but for a luxury vehicle, I think that should come standard. Sirius XM also doesn't come standard and you get both of those in what Mercedes calls the premium package for this car. It's only 500 bucks, so at the end of the day, it's not a big deal at all, but it's just something that I wish would come standard because it's kind of a luxury vehicle thing to have keyless entry. It's just weird in my opinion to not have it. And the last thing that I am not absolutely crazy about in the GLC 300 is the amount of turbo and transmission lag that you get. So I'm driving in sport right now and that's pretty much what I've been driving this in the entire time. One of the things I really like about sport, I will say, and I like the way that Mercedes does this, is that typically in a lot of vehicles, like in my BMW 440i, when you put it in a sport setting, the steering becomes much heavier. And for some people, they may not like that, especially when you're trying to maneuver in parking lots or just driving at slow speeds where you need to turn the wheel more. And something that Mercedes does that I really like is that the steering only gets heavy at higher speeds. So at low speeds, and especially like when you're in parking lots, it behaves normally, it turns very easily. And that's really nice for a lot of people. Now, I actually like heavy steering feel. I'm just used to it in all the BMWs that I've owned, but I really like the way that Mercedes did it here because it gives you the sporty aspect when you're you know, driving on a back road and that type of thing, but it's also really nice at slow speeds. It's not like, it's not too heavy to maneuver in a parking lot. But back to the lag, you do get a lot of it. Now I love that there is a manual button in here, so when you press that, it basically activates use of the paddles, it goes into a fully manual mode. And I like that a lot, but the paddles, most of the time are not very responsive. Sometimes it will actually respond pretty quickly, but it's like click. Okay, so it it was almost perfect there, but click, downshift. Click, then it downshifted. It's just not as quick as I'd like it to be, and honestly, that's not really that big of a deal in a GLC 300. If the AMG versions of this SUV behaved that way, then that would definitely be more of a problem, and I haven't driven those, but I would imagine that the paddle response is much quicker in those. But it just, in general, you get a lot of lag. Like when you punch it, it takes so long for it to just go. And part of that, I think, is the transmission downshifting to the right gear, but then there's also just like the aspect of building boost, I think, just makes it a little bit laggy. So again, I absolutely love the new 2020 Mercedes-Benz GLC 300. This is such a good small SUV. It's a really perfect vehicle for somebody who likes to drive spiritedly, but also has a family and has to carry some things and doesn't want to spend a ton of money. Overall, this is fun. It's practical. It drives really nicely. It's very comfortable. It's a great all-around vehicle and Mercedes made it even better. There we go. <laughs> That's what I'm saying, like just mid-conversation. So anyways, they did a great job with the GLC 300 and I absolutely love it. I've loved driving it today and uh, yeah, good job Mercedes because 
<laughs> you really killed it with the new GLC. So while there were five things that I'm not absolutely crazy about, would I buy this car? Yes. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for taking this drive with me and I'll talk to you soon.